This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. Welcome back. Fawn Foot, Hickory Nut, and Fat Pocketbook are a few of the fun name of Missouri's 65 mussel species. And to learn more about mussels and their importance to our environment, we have Danielle Yeager from the Missouri Department of Conservation here this morning. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for coming on. So first of all, we might see these uh, shells out at the lake at Thousand Hills, oh, yes. but exactly what is a mussel? Mussels are mollusks like clams and oysters that people eat. Okay. Um, they have two shells mm -hmm. that are attached by a hinge-like ligament. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have, I don't know if you guys can zoom into that, but uh, they have what's called a foot that kind of looks like a tongue that they mm -hmm. use to move around and to bury themselves mm -hmm. into the sediment. And they have two siphons, one for eating mm -hmm. and one for exuding their waste. Okay, interesting. Yes. So why should we even care about mussels? Well, mussels are really important to their waterways. Okay. Um, they are a primary food source for many animals, including okay. uh, raccoons, um, otters, mm -hmm. herons, fish, all kinds of other animals. Um, in particular, this species is a fragile paper shell, mm -hmm. and it has a very thin shell, so mm -hmm. a lot of, of the animals really like this because it's easy to get into. So if you're uh, kayaking along a waterway or something like that, mm -hmm. you might see a, what's called a little midden or mm -hmm. pile of these guys laying out yeah. on the bank. And I have noticed that, and I've noticed the different sizes. Oh, so yes. how are mussels doing today? I mean, do we have an abundance of them? Are they in lower numbers? Well, uh, the Midwest is actually one of the hot spots for mussels, okay. but unfortunately, of the 65 species that are in Missouri, about 40% of them are what's considered species of conservation concern, mm -hmm. um, meaning that they're not doing so well. There's not too many of them. Um, there's a couple reasons for this. Um, one of them is the channelization, dredging, and pollution of mm -hmm. um, our waterways. Another is, um, I don't know if you guys have known about the invasive species of mussel called the zebra mussel. Okay. Um, they are very detrimental. They um, have little tendrils. They're not very big mussels. They're mm -hmm. only about like that big but they are in massive groups and they can attach themselves to any hard surface, including rocks, pipes, um, and other mussels. So if enough of these little zebra mussels get onto another mussel, they can actually suffocate, oh, wow. which is not very good at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. All right, so obviously they're, they're not very mobile, so how yeah. do they reproduce? Well, the males will release their sperm out into the water and the females using their siphon will filter it in and will fertilize the eggs. The eggs will then um, be released back into the water and will hopefully be caught up by a what's called a host fish, mm -hmm. just any sort of fish, and it will attach itself to their gills or their fins and will further develop from there. And once they're developed enough, then they will fall off and hopefully bury themselves into a good spot. Wow. Um, there is a particular species of mussel, the pocketbook, which uh, guys were just viewing there. They have a special modified mantle mm -hmm. that is kind of looks like a minnow, which mm -hmm. will actually lure the host fish to the mussel so the glochidia, their larvae, will better be able to attach to the fish. Hmm. So it's very, very interesting. <laughs> very so, cool. So finally, how have we utilized mussels over the years? Well, uh, humans have utilized mussels for a long, long time. Um, the Native Americans would actually eat the mussels as one of their primary food sources mm -hmm. if they're living near a river. Um, and in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the button industry was very big and um, millions of mussels were harvested for their shells um, because they're nice and shiny uh -huh. they were used uh, interesting for mussels and for buttons interesting um, yeah and actually today some mussels are still used for the pearl industry today mm -hmm. Fantastic. So uh, my final question, because we are running out of time. So we did mention that, you know, we might find these shells along the outer banks of the lake. And I know mm -hmm. that, you know, Thousand Hills is a state park. Are we allowed to remove the shells or do we need to let them stay there? Um, you can remove little ones. This 
type of shell. Okay. I don't know if you guys can zoom into there. This is called an Asian clam. Okay. And this is actually not a native species. Okay. So we don't care if you guys take these, but all of the other mussels, um, if you do find them, which you can find them in um, our river accesses mm -hmm. or some of our other conservation areas, Feel free to pick them up, look at them, but please put them back the way that you found them. Okay. And if you can't remember which way you found them, just put them on their side so that they can write themselves after you leave. Okay, perfect. Well, All thank right. you so much. What we'll do is we'll post everything on our website at ktbo.com and we'll link up information with Missouri Department of Conservation. Again, thank you so much, Danielle, for coming on. Thank you. And we'll be right back.